7.22 is the time. End of uh, Plan B restrictions in uh, England as of today, but not an end yet, certainly, uh, to that plan uh, to sack tens of thousands of uh, NHS staff for refusing to get a COVID jab, some of which are people who've had COVID and the people we were clapping for in the uh, first lockdown. Remember those heady days, folks? Well, we spoke earlier in the week to Steve James, he's been on the, uh, the station a few times. He's the NHS consultant who basically very calmly, very professionally and very, very scientifically uh, confronted the Health Secretary Sajid Javid uh, while he was on a hospital visit, saying, why am I going to be sacked when you know, I've had COVID and I'm, um, I'm, I don't want to get the jab. Uh, well, Sajid Javid at Health Set Committee yesterday did actually talk about, um, uh, well, basically putting that policy under review. Are they finally seeing sense? Well, let's talk to another NHS consultant who's facing losing his job in a matter of months for refusing to get the vaccine. And that's Dr Simon Fox, who's an NHS consultant, a hospital consultant in infectious diseases and internal medicine. Good morning to you, Simon. Morning, Julia. Um, Thanks thank for having me well, on. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got you know really a very similar story to tell uh, as, along with Steve James that you you've been working in the NHS, you worked through COVID, uh, you were one of the people we were all standing on our doorsteps doing this for, thanking people. Um, now we're going to get you the sack apparently because you're refusing to have treatment. So people listening to this might go, "You're a doctor, you're an expert in infectious diseases. Why on earth aren't you taking this vaccine? Are you anti-vax?" Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not anti, um, anti-vax. anti And uh, look, I think vaccines are really, really important. And so we have to be very careful how we use them. Um, and so uh, it, it's really important that we um, uh, preserve people's confidence in vaccines. Um, there are lots of diseases that we control uh, very well using vaccines. And so I, I think that uh, using this one-size-fits-all model, it, it, it just runs the risk of really um, driving scepticism. Um, well, yeah, we saw. I mean, we saw the uh, the, the anti-vaxxer against MMR based on Andrew Wakefield's, let's face it, blatant lies about the evidence he presented on yeah. a link with autism. We've seen a lot of fallback. I mean, I'm I'm a great great fan of vaccines. They save lives. There are millions of people alive as a result of them. But for you, you'd made a decision. You didn't want to get the COVID vaccine. Now, there were people in tears. I can remember in this office when the vaccine was rolled out um, uh, that very first time there were people really feeling quite emotional. I was among those that, wow, this was going to be the end of the line. Now, of course, you know, we're, we're still not there yet. Um, and the vaccines haven't turned out to be the panacea when it comes to freedoms, if not for uh, big help in terms of people getting seriously ill and dying. But if you've been working in a hospital throughout, you must see the benefit of them. So why do you think that you don't need to get the vaccine? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I agree that we, we should really celebrate the fact that we do have vaccines and the fact that they are reducing mortality and hospital admissions in people who are at risk of uh, severe disease with um, COVID-19. So, so that's great. But the issue is, is that um, they're, they're not interrupting transmission. And that's a fact that the, the Prime Minister acknowledged himself back in October. Yeah. Um, so, so that's that's well known, and and, um, and yeah. even less so, well, more so with with, with Omicron in terms of most people like uh, me who've got Omicron absolutely. have actually had an infection before. Uh, absolutely. So, um, we, 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 given that, what we should be doing is moving from a model where we use vaccines to control disease rather than this aim of interrupting transmission, which they can't do. They can control disease. Having said that, at the same time, it's really important that we acknowledge the importance of personal autonomy. That's a big step to be mandating people, um, in this case, in healthcare workers, to have a, a vaccine against their will. Yeah. And if you want to do that, you have to have really good evidence that it's necessary. And the evidence that is now uh, building isn't just that it's w that we're not sure, it's that we know it doesn't make a difference. In terms um, of the transmission. So, so the, is the issue if you, you, you know, you were working through our, uh, you, I, I think you had COVID around the same time, I think I did very early on, and yeah. you've then continued to work, and you've not been infected again since. You, you, and you've presumably done antibody tests, and yeah. are of the view that 
the, 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 you've already got the same protection you would have got from the vaccines and therefore you're being asked to take a, a vaccine which you and again government and many scientists in this country seem to dispute this but I think the evidence is really mounting is it not and would have been standard you know standard immunology knowledge until Covid that people who had a prior infection have a have greater protection than those who've had a vaccine and yet we seem to have thrown yeah. that sort of really quite common knowledge out of the window. So, uh, uh, yes, unfortunately, lots of things have been thrown out the window that wouldn't, were, were, were generally accepted three years ago. Um, so so that, that seems to be what, what the situation is. Um, so your view is, look, I don't need it myself. I feel that I'm protected. Even if I had it, it wouldn't protect my patients because I well, could still view, pass it on. Yes. So my, my view is that given that I've had the infection, and that I've worked with patients with COVID-19 for the last two years and have undoubtedly been repeatedly challenged with the virus, I can, I can, I can hand on heart say that I am as immune as anyone else can claim to be. Yeah. And therefore you'd be asked to take a medicine, a, a, a treatment that you don't need and you don't want. And do you think that there there is the threat that some people said, well, it's just care homes, well, it's just NHS staff, it's people working with vulnerable people, the elderly, there's a duty of care, that actually, once it's everyone in the care homes, once it's the NHS staff, that actually it will become effectively everyone. I mean, a lot of us, including me, already feeling it with international travel. Basically, if you ain't jabbed, you're really not going to be able to travel abroad anymore. Well, that's the concern, obviously, isn't it? And so, you know... W- where does this end? At what point? Are you, once you once you decouple um, policy from basic evidence, then the sky's the limit. And I, I know that sounds slightly alarmist, but that yeah. that is that is the problem with doing that. That is the concern, isn't it? Um, a lot of people have said to me, look, it's perfectly reasonable. And, I, and again, I was very much in two minds. I had an aunt in a care home and she'd been in a hospital months beforehand and, and, you know, seeing the level of infections being passed around hospitals and care homes was concerned. But again, I do think that ugh, I've sort of come around to the idea that actually the principle of bodily autonomy is so much, is so vital and so important and so great that actually you can never, you can never throw it away. But people say, well, that principle's already out the window with the NHS, the requirement on surgeons in particular, but other staff working in the NHS to have Hep, uh, the Hep B jab, but but actually that's not the case, is it? That argument is completely debunked by by the fact the reasons for which it's given, and it's not about protecting the patients; it's about protecting the staff from the patients. And there isn't a requirement to have it at all. There's no legal requirement to have it. No, it's not mandated in law. But but I I think the other thing to say is that there is a recognition with hepatitis B that somebody who has uh, been infected and is no longer infectious um, wouldn't necessarily need to submit to vaccination if yeah. they didn't. If, uh, so, but but that all that aside, I, I think that that is a distraction because the the point is is that in hepatitis B we have a vaccine that's very effective at preventing transmission. We know that, and that is. Um, and, and that's not the case with with COVID nineteen, particularly with Omicron. Yeah. So it's just it's uh, just and, not and, a fair it's just not a fair comparison. Look, times against us. I mean, times against you right now. Um, in terms of your job, um, <laughs> you've been you spent years training, spent years working. You you know you like many others on the front line dealing with COVID, absolute heroes um, during this uh, pandemic. Um, when other people are sitting at home on their laptops, with their soy lattes, um, clapping for you, but you know leaving you on the front line. Um, you're going to unless the policy changes lose your job on the on the 1st of april um the prime the, the, the health secretary said they are putting this under review um if they don't change the policy are you you are willing you're willing that's it you will you will leave the nhs uh because of this yes that's an incredibly brave move it, it's not it, it's it's just it, it's it this is so important uh, that I think, and a lot of my colleagues feel the same way, yeah. and um, and each have their own personal circumstances. And I think there there are there are a group of, of us that are willing to leave, but there is a much bigger group, much bigger group in the NHS who oppose this, but for personal reasons can't necessarily walk away. Yeah. Um, and 
so so I mean a, a recent study showed that that five out of six NHS workers opposed the mandate. That's a lot of uh, goodwill to lose. And again, government. from people who've had the jab themselves, and again, I think there's a lot of people, and I'm including this, who felt like pressure to get the jab where they didn't think we really needed it. And I think that's where a lot of people are. Um, I think you're incredibly brave, um, and, and I absolutely salute you for standing by your principles. I really do. I think a lot of people listening will be cheering you on there. Dr. Simon Fox is an NHS consultant who faces losing his job despite working on the front line, being an expert in infectious diseases. I mean, we are living in insane and terrifying times.